asleep. And we're live. Welcome back. I'm Pastor Doug. Groen will be joining us shortly. Tonight we are reading from Second Samuel chapter 21. Are you coming in or not? You not feeling well? All right, we'll go lay down. I'll finish this. We read tonight. We're reading from Second Samuel chapter twenty-one, verses one to fourteen. Welcome to a moment of joy. As always, we encourage you to read along with us. Second Samuel is about a quarter of the way into your Bible. It comes after First Samuel and before First Kings. And so, yeah, here we are, chapter 21, beginning in verse 1. During the reign of David, there was a famine for three successive years. So David sought the face of the Lord. The Lord said, This is on account of Saul and his blood-stained house. It is because he put the Gibeonites to death. The king summoned the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not part of Israel, but were survivors of of the Anarites. The Israelites had sworn to spare them, but Saul, in his zeal for Israel and Judah, had tried to annihilate them. David asked the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you? How shall I make atonement so that you will bless the Lord's inheritance? The Gibeonites answered him, We have no right to, ma to demand silver or gold from Saul or his family, nor do we have the right to put anyone in Israel to death. What do you want me to do for you, David asked. They answered the king, As for the man who destroyed us and plotted against us, so that we have been decimated and have no place anywhere in Israel, let seven of his male descendants be given to us to be killed, and their bodies exposed before the Lord at Gibeah of Saul, the Lord's chosen one. So the king said, I will give them to you. The king spared Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the oath before the Lord between David and Jonathan, son Saul. But the king, but the king took Armon, no Armani, and Mephibosheth, the two sons of Ahaz's daughter, Rizpah whom she had borne to Saul, together with five sons of Saul's daughter Merib, who had been born to Adriel, son of Barzillai, the Mahithalite. He handed them over to the Gibeonites, who killed them, and exposed their bodies on the hill before the Lord. All seven of them fell together. They were put to death during the first days of the harvest, just as the barley harvest was beginning. Rizpah, daughter of Aya, took sackcloth and spread it out for herself on a rock. From the beginning of the harvest till the rain poured down from the heavens on the bodies, she did not let the birds touch them by day or the wild animals by night. When David was told of Aya's daughter Rizpah, Saul, Saul's concubine, had done, he went and took the bones of Saul and his son Jonathan from the citizens of Jabesh Gilead. They had stolen their bodies from the public square in Beth Shan, where the Philistines had hung them after they had struck Saul down at Gibeah, or Gilboa. Sorry. David brought the bones of Saul and his son Jonathan from there and the bones of those who had been killed and exposed were gathered up. They buried the bones of Saul and his son Jonathan in the tomb of Saul's father Kish in Zela in Benjamin and did everything the king commanded after that. Oh, yeah. After that, God answered prayer on behalf of the land. All right. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to put them in the comments, and and we will address them tomorrow. This is a 
this is a confusing passage. I think I'm going to have to do some research. So, so if you have questions, that'll give me direction on 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 how to best research this passage. So, anyways, um, yeah, let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. And we pray that we would learn what you would have us learn from it. And we don't always understand, but we don't always have to understand. Sometimes we have to just trust you. So we pray in Lord Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Okay, so let's chat. Last night after we went off the air, our, uh, our, our our leaders decided to extend the Emergencies Act for 30 days. I don't understand why. But I will trust God. Like we read earlier in, in, in Second Samuel, Joab said, The Lord will do what is right in his sight. We don't know what's going on. We don't know why these things are happening. But the Lord will do what is right in his sight. So let's pray for our friends, pray for our leaders, and encourage one another. And I'm praying for you. All right. We'll talk to you tomorrow. And until tomorrow, remember the Lord will do what, what is right in his sight. We'll see you at 830 tomorrow evening for another moment of joy. Bye-bye. Oh, I hate saying bye-bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.